Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. On this episode, we are speaking with Microsoft's Heather Cook. She's a principal PM on the Power Platform team focused on business apps community success. She's also one of the key planners for Microsoft's presence at the upcoming Microsoft Power Platform Conference, which runs from October 3rd to the 5th. MSDW is also a media sponsor of the MPPC 23 event. Heather tells me how, as an executive producer, she's leading Microsoft's presence, both as a platinum sponsor of the event and in Microsoft's plans to send many representatives to both present and support community efforts. MPPC 23 is the second iteration of this particular event, and we discuss some of the ways that it will build on the experience of last year's event, including Microsoft's role. Heather also shares some perspective on her broader outlook on community initiatives, both in-person and online, paid and free. She notes some of the best opportunities for both skilling and for getting involved with your peers. All right. Well, Heather Cook, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much, Jason. It is a pleasure to be here with you. Yay. I'm excited to talk and to learn a little more about what is in store at the Microsoft Power Platform Conference 2023. Before that, though, maybe you could tell our listeners a little bit more about your role at Microsoft, and I think it maybe changed a bit in uh, in recent times. Sure. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all great. Let's see. My official title, my role title hasn't changed. I'm still a principal PM manager in the Power Platform team over on the Dynamics 365 Power Platform Community Success uh, side of the house. And you're like, what does that mean? So yeah, I my focus in Charter is all about community evangelism. That hasn't really changed, but I have a greater focus on all of our community events, so our third party events, and then how we bring community into our first party events as well. I have a big background from my days, both as a theater person, and then I was an event producer for Microsoft for close to two decades. And so the focus for me is just more strategy and thinking about how we show up at these events and how we work with producers and how we work with our speakers and all that good stuff. So yeah, so that's been sort of the bit of a shift for me coming into the last few months. Yeah, super excited. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And we'll certainly talk events here because well, I think we'll start with with the MPPC, if, if that's what people are calling it. I've, I've started writing it that way. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. MPPC 23, for sure. So, yeah. And yeah, yeah. One of the things I was at last year's event, which was great. And, and one thing that I came away from, and I think was one of the real points of discussion coming out of it, was how the experience would evolve, given that it was you know so well attended and there was a lot of good momentum coming out of the event. Yeah. Can we start there? Can you talk about how the event experience was for you last year, what you took away from it? I don't know if you had an official MC role. Maybe you did, but you were certainly there and doing a lot of stuff I could see. What did you take away from it and how is it evolving? I have the absolute sort of pleasure and delight of I was the executive producer of the event last year and I, I'm wearing that same hat this year. Um, so which, what does that mean? Uh, that means, you know, I'm working directly with our teams on just ensuring we have, you know, a great event um, for our sponsorship of the event. So Microsoft is a, you know, we're the lead sponsor for it. It's produced by a third party. So I'm in charge of Microsoft's overall presence at the event. And so I did that last year and I did, I am, I'm in the thick of it <laughs> right now for yeah. this year. And yeah, and I, I'm a speaker. So I did our community closing keynote. I think I had like three sessions and a bunch of round tables. I, it was probably actually a little too much to be honest with you. Um, so I'm dialing it back a smidge this time. And also, you know, one of my big passions is, you know, like who is the sort of the, the next generation of folks who are, you know, doing similar things to what I do um, at Microsoft and just in general in the world. And so I'm really excited about working with a lot of our community evangelists at Microsoft who are just technical specialists and also great speakers. And so really looking at, you know, how can we plug in more of us uh, from the community teams at Microsoft into these shows as well. So I'm really excited about that. So that's kind of how things will change for me this year a little bit for the show. That point is a really interesting one because, you know, I've been covering the space for 15 years. And one of the most interesting things is just to sort of see how people who work at Microsoft in various roles sort of, you know, move through their career and sometimes emerge as much more highly visible and taking on leadership positions and, and just, you know, moving as, as people at Microsoft tend to do. When it comes to like Microsoft's presentations at the event or, you know, presence there, are there people you think will sort of be very visible this year that maybe people will want to get to know? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, from last year it was, it was a, the first one really in this space um, that's emerged there's, and there's what's so back up and then I'll, I'll totally answer your question, but um, <laughs> uh, there's like a little bit of it's what's fun is that what I've been seeing in sort of the marketplace and the industry, especially around Microsoft is that, you know, a lot of the SharePoint event producers who've been around a long time, you know, pre COVID and all of that, they started adding pla- power platform in as like, a few sessions or then it was like a track. And, you know, that was happening when the words power and platform came together about, you know, 2019 officially. Right. And so that growth was happening. And then, you know, we had the pandemic hit, and then, you know, that was still happening, you know, virtually. But I think what, you know, has come about is that, you know, we had all of this growth during this odd time for all of us, right? <laughs> you know, this like, thing right. that happened to every person on the planet. And so, you know, now um, having, you know, dedicated events to this family of products is really exciting. And doing the last, you know, last year's event, you know, it was like thinking about when that happened, it was still, we were still all a little like, uh, you know, you know, is this going to happen? Are we, you know, are people going to come in person and all of that? And then to have, you know, over 4,000 people people show up in person in Florida was just so exciting and just really a testament to the excitement around the community and the products. And, you know, it's like, I've had the fortunate, you know, career path of really working on community when before community was called like community, you know, it's become mm-hmm. more of a buzzword, I think over the last while. And so when we were doing SharePoint stuff, it was like, you know, it was like, we just were doing events and making videos and writing, you know, like it, it wasn't like the community, but that grew over time. Right. So I feel like watching the power platform community really grow and take off. It's a smattering of both people who are power platform people. It's dynamics folks because of the backbone of dynamics in the products. It's people who were really heavily in the SharePoint and M365 space who, you know, some people say crossed over, but it's kind of all the same in a way. So it's just to me, the testament of the community itself that we had all of those people show up last year and then building on that momentum and excitement kind of throughout since last September of like, you know, all the great other community events that were happening, the user groups, you know, the the big flagship events at Microsoft, you know, the Microsoft Ignite and then Build. So it's sort of continuing that momentum in everything. It's not like you do an event and it stops, right? There's all kinds of things happening all year round that sort of build up to sort of a bigger show like this, where Microsoft does have a big presence, where we are one of the platinum sponsors. So that's, that's really exciting to me to see that sort of, it's not just just one thing that happens. It's things that are happening year round all the time that lead you to, you know, different paths of technical skilling and the ability for the product team to, you know, talk about what's coming next um, with the release waves that happen in April and October for Power Platform and Dynamics 365, you know, things that happen in between, you get a little boost and a nudge of being able to talk to talk about something right before the release wave happens, you know, as an example. But I'm excited to see the growth. You know, it's it will be a bigger show because the MGM Grand is a bigger venue for sure. And so, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, where we get to as far as our attendees and all of that stuff coming up too. Yeah. I was just thinking, as you said that, I don't think there's ever been a time where there's better opportunities for community to sort of flourish between events. I can just speak more from the dynamic side than the SharePoint side from what I've covered, but there's always been strong community in my experience with various dynamics products. I thought there was too with the SharePoint side, although it was a little separated. But with so much community now sort of enabled online with you know virtual meetups and, and in-person things throughout the year, I did wonder a couple of years ago, maybe around COVID, whether that would sort of giving more momentum to those things would maybe take away a bit of the momentum from in-person events. And obviously those needed to come back and, and kind of reestablish themselves um, in the last year or two. But uh, it, it seems like it's more additive at this point in my my view. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on. I think the things that I saw from like coming out of COVID and being in the middle of it, like one of the things that I did at the time, like I've only been in my role three years back as a full-time employee at Microsoft. And so I was hired June of 2020. And just prior to that, I was hired and worked for the Microsoft Teams team, the engineering team, because of my event experience and my event producer experience. Basically, I helped work on taking these physical events to become virtual because that's what happened right in the mm-hmm. beginning. And if we think about March of 2020, when everything locked down and started, you know, that whole thing is that, you know, all these things and events were coming up. And so it was like, what are we going to do for MVP Summit? What are we doing for this event, that event, for Build, all of that? So I had a first 
like a bird's eye view actually into the fastest engineering I've never, I've ever seen happen in my life. You know, and that like making events from physical to virtual was one thing, but it was like everything. It was like all the things that the team's team and others were doing to help people during COVID, right? To go from this, oh, wait a minute, physical, in-person, everything, not just events, but now we need to take this virtual because people need help. So that was amazing to be a part of and see how that worked. And then I think what we learned during this time is that one community is hugely important. It showed a spotlight on, I think, Microsoft's overall community platforms and learning platforms and, you know, all the, the, the digital experience, the digital first experience potential. What was there? What wasn't? What do we need to work on? What could be better? You know, all of that kind of thing was where some lights were shown, I think, um, during this time. It has really helped push community to another level, meaning that, you know, community is about human beings, right? It's about belonging and connection between us. And at least I believe that. And, but there's also infrastructure, you know, and places for people to gather and go when, you know, we can't be together. And the coolest thing out of all of this craziness was that, you know, the inclusivity that came out of it, because not everybody can go to a show because of a gazillion reasons. It could be because they can't afford it, they can't get to it. It's just something that their company will never pay for, that they can't get to. So having events become hybrid and also op more open in that way really allowed more people to get in and get technical skilling and learn things. So that to me were some of the biggest things that I saw coming out of it is just the inclusivity and the openness of access to all of these things. But that you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, I love that phrase, but <laughs> it's at the end so of the day. yeah, at the end of the day, so Microsoft, but anyway, we still do want to gather. We want to be with each other. You know, there are things that happen in between the sessions. It's the, it's the space in between to me that is so important and where such cool things happen. It's the hallway conversation. It's the, you know, walking back to the X, Y, Z or whatever, those things, like some of those moments in my life over the last 20 years, I've either made one of the best friends I've ever had. I've gotten a new job, I've gotten a new project, all those things, you know? So inclusivity, the openness, and then that also at the heart of things, we do want to gather and be together, you know? Another kind of uh, example that comes to mind is I think, you know, maybe if not meeting people personally is discovering speakers or discovering, learning things from people who you didn't know were experts in a certain area or who opened things up. Are there any, um, either from Microsoft or from perhaps people in the community that you know are going to be speaking that oh, yeah, yeah. you'll be looking out for, or I don't know if you want to name anyone by name, but are there? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, one, uh, just on the Microsoft side, you know, we've got a lot of the leaders from the product teams, not a lot of them though. Practically most of them are going to be there. So, you know, Brian Cunningham from Power Apps and Steven Cicliano from Power Automate. We've got Omar Aftab from Conventional AI Power Agents. Nirav Shah is coming from Dataverse. Sonia Singh from Power Pages. Julie Strauss. You know, so we've got a lot of the leadership folks coming and then also just a lot of the product team who actually builds everything. So there's a ton of those folks coming in. Um, for the Microsoft sessions, we're really working hard on making sure that there's real world stories customer stories, either stories or the customer or demo, you know, in a lot of the sessions, you know, because I think that's what people really want to hear is how did you do this? What was your entry point? How did you adopt this? You know, how did you get this past people maybe being afraid that, you know, something like this is going to take their jobs away? So we're making sure and make that's a part of all of those sessions. You know, on the community side, you know, there's a lot of Microsoft MVPs, most valuable professionals that are speaking at the show. A lot of folks, you know, like Shane Young is very popular. He's, you know, got a, a huge following and he's from way the back in the day and from the SharePoint, you know, land. I've known him for like 20 years. So he's speaking at the event. Laura Rogers is going to be there as well. She's a terrific speaker. She's been around a long time doing great things. Azure McFarland, who's a consultant um, from Hitachi, will be speaking. Goodness, we've got, there's so many people that are so amazing. <laughs> They're speaking mm -hmm. at the event. Yeah, 
hard to pay. It's hard yeah, to pay. Deion Taylor um, on the dynamic side. We've got you know what I what I love about the community sessions too is that when you know the event itself does call for content and basically people put their stuff in and then you know there was a the event does a whole thing with community leads from the community and they you know take the names away and they like that's the way they pick the content for the show. I think that's awesome. You know that's giving lots of people different chances to you know come and it's not cherry picking necessarily folks to go so yeah i think lots and lots of great choices lots of diverse choices of both product and people and you know folks that you know you'll see people that have youtube channels that write blogs and and then there's some up-and-comer people you know like really making sure that there's some new voices is really important as well um and so folks who you know maybe it's their first or second time speaking too so yeah Definitely. Do we know, um, or do you know, <laughs> how many uh, sessions are planned in the agenda at this point? Is it all locked down? We're very, very close. It's over 100. I know that for sure. I think it's probably going to be close to 130 or so. Mm-hmm. Is it three full days at the event plus training on either side? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For the keynotes, we've got keynotes on the first day, which is Tuesday. Um, and that's Charles Lamana, our corporate vice president for business applications and platforms. You know, he'll kick us off. And then uh, we also have that day, Thomas Dolke from GitHub, who's the CEO. That's really exciting, you know, to getting that, you know, developer mm-hmm. views and stories in there. And then Sumit Chaudhran, who is, she's the head of the office team, the office group over there. She's also corporate vice president. So those folks are going to be on the first day. Then we're going to head into a, you know, a lovely evening event party. The event team, decided to have that at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, which is where all of like the boxing and concerts are. So super excited about that. I don't know all the details yet. I probably know more than most since I'm you know, working with them almost every day, but that will be super cool. Um, there's not an announcement yet of exactly what that's going to be, but if you can imagine the concerts and boxing happen in there, you might imagine what might be uh, coming for the announcement for that. And then we also have Arun Ula Baratakan, who is the corporate vice president for Azure Data, Microsoft Fabric, and Power BI. So he's speaking on Thursday morning. And then the event itself just announced a motivational speaker, Adam Grant, who is part of like a lot of the TED Talks. He's a really famous author. Very cool. We'll be there that day as well. So yeah. A lot, a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, in. yeah, and it's really such a, it's such a, a run from sort of the community participants up through, yeah, yeah and, and and you know one of the trends, just as an aside, that I'm I'm looking at a lot these days is sort of how people in the community are sort of getting themselves started, putting themselves out there as presenters getting their their name out there, I guess you'd say, and, and starting to have an impact. Because it is sort of cumulative, I feel like, when not only just your name recognition, but having the experience to know how to write a good title and summary that might get selected at any event, right? I mean, that comes with experience to a large extent. Oh, for sure. I've been looking and there's a few sessions. So we have a community and diversity and inclusion set of sessions as well on a couple of panels. So we're going to have a panel on career switchers. We're going to follow up on the Power Up program that was announced last year. I know there's going to be a panel on women and allies in low code. Um, and then there's sessions that are about you know DNI and both community that are going to be given by Microsoft folks, and then also some community folks as well. So I'm really excited about that too. And I know last year, I believe it was either last year or another event recently where we did, there was a session that some of our community folks from Microsoft gave about how to write a compelling title and abstract because mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's super duper important. And, you know, I think that those themes are, you know, I really appreciate when event producers bring the diversity and inclusion elements and community elements into the shows um, as far as like actual sessions. Um, that's something, you know, I've been passionate and working on with folks for a really long time because, because I know the event producers, because I, you know, I'm on the production side for Microsoft, I get to know all of our event producers in the space as well, too. And I've known a lot of them for, you know, now decades. And a lot of them also, you know, some of them didn't make it through the pandemic. It was super sad, you know, that some folks that had been around doing this stuff just couldn't or decided to, you know, go do something else, you know? So it's really, I love being able to collaborate with these folks and talk to them about, you know, the ideas that I have and trends that they're seeing and ways to always just to continue to kind of raise the bar on what they're doing and, and pay attention to accessibility, you know, and diversity and inclusion and, you know, like having a quiet room and, you know, certain things like that, that, you know, are just evolving over time. So it's really cool. And our, the producers of the Microsoft Power Platform Conference are really great about all that stuff. 
Yeah. One of those areas that I'm particularly going to try to pay attention to is the, I guess you call it the career development aspect. I think you were, you were alluding to there, which is such an amazing, I mean, even if you're already established in this space, I think to know that you're working in a, an ecosystem that has the potential to nurture sort of new hires and bring people into the space for, you know, very interesting sort of career opportunities that you know seem very, very achievable and legitimate for the right people. It feels really good, right? To know that you're engaged in that kind of work. Absolutely. Dr. Carlos Solis, um, he's an educator and administrator at Texas State University, and he'll be in, and I'm doing a session with him just about higher education as well and talking about low code. He's one of the, he's like, he's all about low code, digital equity and all of that. So we have a session planned where we're going to talk about that in a bit of a fireside chat. He came with it last year and we're doing that again. But yeah, I, I speak at a lot of events and I've always said, you know, I love talking about technology, but I also really want to talk about the these you know diversity inclusion career community things as well and so i've said always like can i please have sessions about that <laughs> you know as mm-hmm. well over mm-hmm. the years and you know i don't have to ask anymore which is lovely you know it's sort of like a given and more and more events are where it's a given i think microsoft as well to really you know, address you know career switchers is another big one especially in the low code no code space um i think we have so many great stories um, that our power, we have a team that's called PowerCat, and uh, they're the customer advisory team at Microsoft, and they work so closely with our customers. And so they bring out stories, not just from enterprise customers, but they do highlight those very well. But they also really work on individual stories of people who are, you know, some people like and don't like the term citizen developer, but you know, bringing out the makers and citizen developer stories because, you know, one person at a company can change everything, right? Like all of a sudden, you know, you build one app and, you know, empower apps and then people are like, whoa, what's that? And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like there's an old commercial. It's a shampoo commercial. This is dating myself. It's like an agree shampoo and it said, and you shampoo your hair and so on and so on and so on. And so, and it's like, it's like a multiplier, right? Like once people kind of get a taste of that, then other folks are like, wait a minute, you did that? How did you do that can I do it too and there's something about low code no code that is really you know it's it's got this great ubiquitous quality if you know you know excel and powerpoint you know you can build a power app because you you have some tools there yes those are productivity tools but the thought process behind it really plays into being able to step in and become that citizen developer and potentially you know go from one space to another like there's stories of security guards that all of a sudden they're now in charge of building apps you know depending on the company and there's all kinds of great stories like that and i love that these events are a lot of the times a catalyst or a place where someone is looking for that and finds it and takes that next step. And, you know, it's it's great to see people advance their careers through these these events. And also, you know, Microsoft Learn has got a great pathways as well. I've learned the power is more about the power platform taking on this job just through doing the Microsoft Learn pathways and, you know, getting my badges and all of that. Because I come from the SharePoint M365 team side of the house, you know, and even after three years, I'm still, oh my gosh, I mean, there's so much to know about Power Platform and Dynamics 365, right? So I'm learning all the time as well, along with our community members. And I love seeing that for sure. Yeah. And and to add to that, the products just seem like they're almost accelerating in their roadmaps. (laughs) It's not, you'll never quite have your arms around all of it. Yeah. Yeah, completely. And what I do love about the Power Platform is that like there's entry points, right? You know, some people are talking about the low code revolution dot three or dot four, you know, and some people are like, well, I'm still on one or two, you know, (laughs) it's like, Mm -hmm. but it's all are welcome, you know, and there's room for everybody. And I feel like, you know, it's really about starting with one thing with kind of its life, you know, it's like, what's the one thing that could really help you, you know, and a lot of times power automate is a lot of a really good entry point, you know, just getting something automated. Um, that is, well, and half the time it's like, it's something annoying or something you have to do over and mm-hmm. over again, you know, that you can figure out. I use it all the time internally because we're always sort of collecting information from people and it goes to somewhere like a SharePoint list or Dataverse and we want to action that data in some way and, and let somebody know that we're using it. So a notification fires off and this and that. So to me, that one is, that I believe I would say was my actual entry point into the Power Platform. And I learned about Power Platform first from Louise Fries, who is one of our MVPs and community members at a SharePoint Saturday London event right before the pandemic. It was the first time I had heard anything about it, and it was from her. 
I still remember that. Oh yeah. I remember yeah. it. Cause I was like, she was showing, um, they have a, she and a, a friend of hers colleague has a, they have a sticker company and she was showing how they take orders in the company and then it, they use power automate to fire off notifications and get things made and get things shipped and all that stuff. It was super cool. Yeah. That's awesome. The other thing I did want to cover while I have you here is just a, a bit of a perspective on how MPPC 2023 fits in with the other community initiatives that you are focused on. I know you've touched on some of those, but can you give a little more perspective on that? For me, community and be, being someone in a role that has community in the title, you know, my biggest job is listening and looking for ways that I can take in from our community, from our customers and partners on what things they need that help and support them get what they need, do what they want, become more successful. So, you know, I think there's always choices about, you know, as like for strategy of like what we're going to concentrate on, you know, this year. And there's, there's lots of places to put time and energy, right? And so I feel like there's, you know, a couple of things that for me, the power up program is really cool. And that is a place where people can sign up to get technical skilling. Um, and so some of my, you know, teammates, colleagues in another team are working on that. But I think that's a really excellent program that also leverages and, you know, leads people through the pathways for just getting skilled. With community events, again, kind of that year round, like, where do we as Microsoft put our time and energy into what events and when and where, you know, there's an event like Power Platform Conference, which is a bigger event. And it's also a paid conference where we're this, where we're a sponsor. You know, there's other events along the way that are free events, you know, community led free events like, a, you know, Power Platform Saturday or a community days. Communitydays.org is a site that came out of an idea from an MVP, Thomas Daly, out of the New York, New Jersey area, where he saw the SharePoint SPS events site that they decided to close that nonprofit. And he was like, whoa, wait a minute. On any given Saturday, there's like two or three SharePoint Saturdays going on in the world. We need that infrastructure. What do we do? So Thomas was like, well, I'm going to recreate this site and you know add to it. And I was like, what are you doing? And uh, myself and Caruana Gatimu, who is, you know, in the customer advisory team on the Teams team and now the Microsoft 365 team, basically said, Thomas, this is awesome. Hey, could we help with like the infrastructure? Can you build it, run it from the community, but could we put it on Microsoft infrastructure so that you have it stable, it's got all the nines and all that kind of jazz. So that was a really great example of someone in the community having an idea and us being like, okay, well, wait a minute. We don't, as Microsoft, we don't want to be like, oh, we need to own that and, you know, like that kind of thing. But it was more, how can we help? How can we make sure that, you know, it, that's got the support is needed? And that really spawned a lot of, you know, talk about the Microsoft Global Community Initiative, which is something that is public, MGCI, that we work, that everybody and anybody can belong to. And it's a place for us to hear community voices and feedback in a way that's a little bit more structured. So we created that on purpose, too, coming out of the pandemic. So... Like to me, those are kind of the initiatives and projects that I look at because I, I'm doing my thing for business applications and, you know, Power Platform and Dynamics 365. But, you know, I also come from the community. So I have this sort of penchant for, and it's just the way my brain works, that I always look at the big picture of like, how are we doing this across all of Microsoft and, and all of that. So I also started internally the Microsoft Community Council, which we have about 500 people in and we meet monthly and we have subcommittees and we, anybody who's running community or advocacy programs and all of that, I mean, anybody can be a part of it internally, but that's kind of who is there on a regular basis. And we talk a lot about shared infrastructure, shared, you know, programs, like let's maybe not recreate the wheel. If we all need a speaker bureau or a place where we can, you know, do X, Y, Z, or I figured out how to use Power Automate in this way, let's share those things so that we can all go faster um, and do, do more and also have a consistent experience for our community members and our customers out in the world, right? Because there's a lot of sites right? There's a lot of community sites. There's a lot of training sites. It's kind of bifurcated. So if there's a way that, you know, with me being where I am in my position and role, that I can help continue to bring us together and make things less confusing. And maybe even, a, I don't know, how about a single sign in at some point? That is my kind of you know, fist in the air, <laughs> North Star, and those sorts of things. So that's 
those are the types of things that I look at. And how does the Power Power Platform Conference play into that? You know, it's another wonderful, you know, swim lane of technical skilling in a large way where we're showing up as a sponsor. And that momentum will continue into the other events that we're going to be at and, you know, also either sponsor or have speakers or, you know, be involved with for the rest of the year. Well, to bring it back to uh, the conference that we initially uh, planned this conversation around, uh, Microsoft Power Platform Conference, it's October 3rd through 5th. Yep. I'm looking forward to, if I can catch you there, it'll be pretty crowded, but I'll make sure to say no, hello. Absolutely. I would love, yes, that would be fantastic. So, yeah. All right, great. And thanks so much for your time. Anything else you want to to add before we go? No, I just appreciate the time and what you do in the world with this podcast. And, you know, it's really awesome. And I, you know, the whole thing that you all do on the, you know, the Dynamics World Tide is just so cool. And it's just so lovely to always have, you know, I follow what y'all, what you're doing and it's just really uh-huh. nice. So yeah, <laughs> I know, seriously, I appreciate it. It's really, I know it's not just me. We all appreciate what you do. It's very cool. And how, I just want to, how long have you been doing what you do? That was what I wanted Since to around 2008. Yeah. That's awesome. It's been a long time. Back in the on-prem days. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, that's, uh, I guess, one thing, too, about, you know, it's this is a lot of focus on the Power Platform Conference, Power Platform. You know, my one of the feathers in my hat is, and Charter, is Dynamics 365 as well. And so, you know, that's something that's pretty cool. The Dynamics 365 platform got a bit of a facelift, and so that's new for coming out just this summer with sort of new user interface and all that sort of thing. And, you know, there's great conferences and and conference producers on that side of the house with Dynamics Con Live uh, with the Doug folks, like they're all terrific. Love working with Molly and John and that team and, you know, really, you know, paying attention to directions, you know, North America, EMEA and all of those shows. So, you know, there's a lot going on at any given time on all of these spaces. And I know you play more on the dynamic side for the most part, but like, so like, that's also, maybe I'll come back and talk to you about that stuff coming up too, because I think I'll have some more thoughts and plans after I get this one done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd love to have yeah. you back. Yeah, that would be great. So cool. Yeah, thanks all everybody. Right. And just come say hello in the community and always feel free to reach out. I love talking to people and follow me on all the Twitter Twitteratis and LinkedIn's and stuff for sure. Um, Oh, that's the other thing. I have a show on Mondays at Microsoft. It's called Mondays at Microsoft. Myself and Carol Wanagatimo through LinkedIn, 8 to 8.30 every other week where you come on and talk about what's going on in products, going on in events. Um, and you just have to follow the Microsoft community LinkedIn page and it's up there. So you can come see us every other week, chit-chatting with y'all about what's up. Excellent. We'll put a link in the show notes for where people can find that. Yeah. Good plug. I forgot about that. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. (laughs) Awesome. All right. Jason, thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. Hope to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Heather. Really appreciate it. This has been another episode of the MSDW podcast. My thanks once again to Heather for joining me. For more on the Microsoft Power Platform Conference, please visit powerplatformconf.com. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can send me an email, jgumpert at msdynamicsworld.com. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World, signing off.